Jesus is Lord. And that single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There is always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church. We're just doing our best to become our best. And at our church, we want you to believe in God because we know that He believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anyway. Instead, we pursue them with love. If you're looking for the perfect church, well, this is not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow with them. At our church, we are part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and feet of Christ Jesus. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His, and we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So, here's the invitation. Jump in with your whole heart at your own pace. We want you to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. We can rise to the occasion. We can build this nation moving forward. All that we need, visionary leadership, people who love their people, people who love the citizens, people who love the country, and then we can rise. We can fly again.
belongs to him. Every word of worship belongs to him. I want us to put our priestly garment this morning and position ourselves to worship the Lord. We're gonna raise our voices and say every praise unto him. Yes, Lord. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise. 
thoughts for me are great. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are a God who is mighty. You are a God who is above. Oh, Everything about you is above. Yes. You are better. Hallelujah. There's no one like you. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We lift your name up, Lord Jesus.
I don't know what is it that you are believing God for this morning. You might be here this morning, you're saying, I'm expecting from God this morning. Hallelujah. I don't know what is your circumstances. I don't know what are your challenges this morning. But I want us just to take a moment, just lift up those hands this morning and say, Father God, here am I. I'm in your presence. I need you like never before. For the mere fact that you are here this morning, it is by the grace of God. Come on, just open your mouth and begin to give him praise. Come on, join, join, join those hands together and just give him praise this morning. He is right here. He is right here to love you. He is right here. He is right here to praise you. He is right here to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Bible says, enter, you know, his courts with praise. Enter, you know, his place of worship with thanksgiving. Honoring him for what he has done. And to glad that you are here this morning. And to glad that he has saved you this morning. And to glad that he has blessed you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Come and give God a big hand of praise. Give God a big hand of praise this morning. I will serve no for in God. Come on. No any other treasures. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have my heart desire. The spirit without measure. The spirit without measure. Even right you at home, you at home. Just make a declaration this morning. I want us to declare this morning. Are you ready to bring your sacrifice this morning? Oh, I will save no foreign God. I will save no that is our declaration this morning. That is our declaration this morning. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Give God a big end of praise. Come on. Come on. Give God a big end of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed this morning? Come on. Give God a big hand of praise. Praise the name of Jesus. I just thought this morning I needed just to welcome you in person this morning. Hallelujah. And then I know people on the other side, they were saying, most welcome. We know you are watching online, you know, in big numbers. Come on, let's welcome those who are joining us online. Please just, just mention where you are coming from. Just mention if where you are joining us from, you know, whatever. I know we've got people joining us from Dubai. We've got people joining us from England. Come on, let's welcome them this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then let's welcome all of you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated, be seated. You know, Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So beautiful to see you this morning. Are you good this morning?
Let me tell you, we're going to have a wonderful, you know, time in the presence of the Lord. Look at the person next to you and tell them that you look more slimmer this morning. You look more slimmer. Hallelujah. I've noticed you have lost some weight this morning. Hallelujah. Look at the other one and tell them you look slimmer in the name. Come on, give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Is there anybody joining us for the first time this morning? If you are joining us for the first time, you have never been in our, in our branches at Hope Restoration. You are a visitor, somebody welcomed you, invited to you this morning. You know, just, you know, by raising your hand, we just want to give you this one of the packages that we have as our visitor to honor you and say thank you for coming. If you have come here for the first time, just raise your hand and our ushers will give you a booklet. Come on, let's welcome them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Niyabu yang zo shumayela. Bengu zo welkama niyabu yang zo shumayela. Ikama bing sanfun lung sanche infarument. Ikama lengko smalbong. Hallelujah. And immediately, those of you who have received those packages, just after the service, just after the service, would love you if you can go into our, you know, into our coffee shop. You use those doors right there. You turn right on the left. It will be our coffee shop. And then our elders will be welcoming you right there. But we want you to fill in one of the forms in those visitors package. Put your name, your numbers, because we want to tell you how much we love you and how much we appreciate you this morning. Is that okay? Is that okay, beloved? In Jesus' name, come and give God praise as we ask. Come and stretch your hands before me and as I speak a blessing over you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are blessed this morning. And this day will never be the same. Whatever has been tormenting you, it's not going to torment you. In the name of Jesus, we give God praise in Jesus' name. Come and give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Surely the Lord is in this place, and we are glad and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. Let me take this time quickly to greet Moruti Le Mamoruti, Kalbizo Le Mata Lamorena Jesu Christe, and I greet the church at large, all protocol observed in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. It's time for offering. Bazalona, we don't have much time, but allow me this morning as I encourage you to give offering to say once more, we serve a faithful God. Hallelujah. He remains faithful. The Bible says in the book of 2 Kings chapter 18, actually 1 Kings chapter 18, and I wanted us to read it from verse 31 up until verse 35, but I'm just going to paraphrase it quickly so that you hear what the Lord wants you to hear this morning. And I've got to move away because you've heard we are in for a good time. Hallelujah. Now, it was Elijah who says, uh, if God be God, let us worship God. If Baal be Baal, let us worship Baal. And obviously he brings people to say, the God who answers by fire shall be the one who is worshipped. The prophets of Baal began to do their altars and they prayed and prayed, nothing happened. And the Bible says at the evening time, Elijah began to repair the altar. Allow me to say the altar has been repaired in this place. Hallelujah. But before the fire came down, he says to them, bring me four gallons of water. Now there's a problem. Because it was not only during a time of famine. It was a time of severe famine. So obviously, water was a scarce commodity. And he says, bring four gallons of water. And I thought it was four liters. And I realized one gallon of, wa of water actually equal, translates to 4.5, above 4.5 liters of water. He says, bring four. And I'm thinking, if you are, want the fire to come down, you cannot be saying, Kisang Meizi. But he says, pour the water on the altar. This morning, I feel like God is saying, bring your, that very scarce resource, which is your money, and pour it upon the altar. Hallelujah. And, you know, they poured the water, nothing happened. And he says, do it the second time. Another four gallons. We're talking over 60 million of liters of water during a severe famine. Don't we feel the same way to say we are just from COVID? We are still in a financial famine, but the Lord is saying the altar has been...
been repaired for the fire to come down there has to be your resources that are brought in the house this one of this very same chapter the lord had already told elijah that go and show yourself to ahab because not many days from now i will pour the rain and i am here to say that rain will be poured upon your life but bring the water and water could be your money this morning I'm thinking it could have been water that they had spared because but the Lord says bring it here it could be money that you are saying is safe it will include and the Lord says bring it not because we are shorter but because we are preparing for a mighty rain shall we close our eyes as I pray father we thank you for the rain that is already we are feeling already we thank you for your faithfulness as we pour the water which is our money over this altar which has already been repaired we thank you that you are still the god that answers by fire we pray that you do that for every individual that will begin to honor you with their finances which is represented by water in your word in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and the church of god say amen hallelujah god bless you as you give we may watch the screens for announcements bless the name of jesus Remember, you can use one of our many secure platforms to give. Go on to our HRM app, click on the campus you're from, and find the EFT details at the bottom. Alternatively, you can use SnapScan. Download it onto your mobile device, fill in your details as well as the amount. You can also scan the QR code appearing on the screen right now. Thank you for partnering with Hope Restoration Ministries in expanding God's kingdom, and God bless you. Greetings, beloved. We are glad that you could join us this morning through our online platforms and in person. My name is Lerato Mulukome, and these are your Hope News. Reverend SC and Pastor P.A. Matevula would like to invite you to the worship feast taking place tonight at 6 p.m. at our Dorkop campus. Matota, this one is for you. We are exactly 25 days away from the Men of Hope Conference. Now the conference dates are from the 6th right up to the 9th of October 2022 at only 250 Rand per person. Please note that the Kingsman t-shirts are also available upon order at 150 Rand at the information desk. Matota, this one is also for you. Please note that on the 18th of September from 1 in the afternoon, we will have the Tlurkop Fellowship with the title, Leave No Man Behind. Now do join in and please note that this is strictly for the Tlurkop campus. This annual Seed of Hope conference will be taking place from the 3rd right up to the 7th of October 2022. Now this is a spirit-filled fun camp for kids aged between 8 and 12 years. Now if you would like to secure a space for your child, please do visit the information desk and put in a deposit fee or pay the total amount at 2,200 rands, all inclusive. Now for more information and registration, do email young at hrm.org.za. In celebration of Heritage Month, please note that we will have our Heritage Sunday on the 25th of September, 2022. Please note that you can catch Reverend SC and Pastor P.A. Matebula on the following channels. One Gospel, DSTV Channel 331 on Sundays at 4 in the afternoon. You can also catch him on all the HRM social media channels, which is Facebook and YouTube on Sundays at half past 5 in the evening. You can also catch him on Faith TV, which is on DSTV Channel 341 on Sundays at half past 7 in the evening. On Star Set on Open View Channel 360 on Sundays at half past 8 in the evenings. You can also catch them on Trace Gospel, which is on DSTV Channel 332 on Mondays at quarter to 6 in the mornings and also at quarter to 6 in the evenings. 
You can also catch them on Sundays at 3 in the afternoon. Now that's it from me, church. Enjoy the rest of the service. Another Pastor Matebula. So is that me? All, all those channels? Eh. I was not aware. <laughs> I was not aware. Well, San Bonan, good morning, good morning. Are you good this morning? Well, we thank God for opening those doors. You know, the beauty is that we are not paying a cent this time. Not even a single cent. In all those channels, your trades, whatever, we are not paying a single cent, including Faith TV. Hallelujah. So God has been so good. He has opened those doors. So tell your friends and then those who have missed it and then they can catch us in all those stations in Jesus' name. Are you good this morning? Amen. Are you good? Amen. Now, now I need, uh, maybe I, 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 I may need to ask the men to remain behind because I, I don't understand. We, the conference is just in 25 days time and uh, men are waiting for the last day to register. We we're not sure that then we have registered. We're not, we're not, you are, we, we are a man of order. I know you have registered. Now, if you are sitting next to a man next to you, just ask them, have you registered for your conference? And if, there's, if they're not, ask them, why not? What are you waiting for? Ask them, please, say, be an example. Be an example. You, you must lead by example, my daughter. Don't wait until the last time. How do we make arrangement? Hallelujah. Are we good? Those of you at home I have registered. My daughter, I'm asked, I'm going to take her over. And, and if you are not aware, they're going to take over. Did you realize we had a keyboard lady from, a, a lady on the keyboard? And we're going to open the space, they're going to take over. I'm telling you, Nyanjel, I mean. And you know that already I'm praying for a female president in this country. And I'm looking forward to have a female president because I'm a daughter, they've messed us up. They are corrupt by John Chabayans. They steal everything. You know, women, they always think about their children. So before we hand over to a women uh, to take over this church, because you can tell that Pastor Matebula already has taken over. Pastor Pindi Matebula, I'm telling you, she has already taken over. Hallelujah. So, so please, let's do that. Hallelujah. Are you good this morning? I think those of you who, who, who were here last Sunday, you've realized we've got a beautiful topic, you know, for a month of September. Hallelujah. And then it's a, it's a topic that says breakthrough. And then we are believing God for a breakthrough in our lives. Praise the name of Jesus. And then just to recap, just for a few minutes, to those who were not here last week, we said, you know, the synonyms of the word breakthrough, it simply means to best forth, you know, to advance, you know, to succeed, you know, or to progress. Those are some of the synonyms of the word, you know, uh, breakthrough. And I also mentioned last Sunday that in a biblical context, the word breakthrough simply means coming out of stagnation you know, to where God wants you to be. And we strongly believe that this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to get out of the stagnation and be where he has placed us to be. He wants us to experience him. And then breakthrough also means, uh, you know, breaking open a new realm in the spirit and brings us through. So we expect in God to break some things in the spirit realm. I mentioned last week that some of the challenges that we are facing in the physical, they are not just physical challenges, but they are spiritual challenges. So if God gives us a breakthrough in the spirit realm and then we are able to experience God even in the physical, you know, realm. And this morning, allow me to take it further. I want us to talk about positioning yourself uh, for, for, for success or for breakthrough. It is very important that we position ourselves for success. Most of us, we do want a breakthrough in life. We do want to be successful. But when you look at our lives, we are not positioned for that breakthrough or for that success, you know. And I know by now you have heard about the saying that says, being in the right place at the right time. Have you ever heard about that saying? That being in the right place at the right time. That simply means 
things do happen when you are in the right place and at the right time. It's all about positioning. Many people do want a breakthrough. They want to experience a success in life, but they don't position themselves for the blessing or for that breakthrough. You know, the scripture, you'd realize that the scripture is full of people who position themselves for success. A breakthrough or success did not just come from nowhere. They positioned themselves. I mean, the person that I'm thinking of this morning, it is the man by the name of Abraham. You know, the Bible says before Abraham could become the father of many nations, you know, he had to first position himself in the land of Canaan. You remember in the book of Genesis chapter 12, this is what it says. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. You know, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you will be a blessing. And we know that, you know, the father's house, they used to worship other gods. And God wanted to bless him. God wanted to make his name great. But he said, Abraham, I cannot make you great in a place where you are. You know, for you to become great, for you to become a blessing, for you to experience a breakthrough in your life, you need to leave the place where you are in. Maybe some of us, we are not experiencing the blessings of God because of the place where we are dwelling. Not in the physical sense. Are you with me, Barcelona? Look at your life. Look at your spiritual life. Look at the people that are surrounding you. Probably, you know, they prevent you from experiencing a breakthrough or a blessing. So it is very important before you experience the grace and the favor of God to position yourself accordingly. And not only that, you know, the other person that we see very clearly in the Bible, it is the man by the name of Elijah. Elijah, you know, for him to experience the blessings of God, God said to him in the book of 1 Kings chapter, chapter 17, this, the, 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 the word of the Lord came to Elijah and it says to him, live here, turn eastward and hide in the Kerith ravine, east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food where? There. It says with food. Where, Bazalwane? There. So the Bible says, so he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Carrot River, east of Jordan, and stayed where, Bazalwane? There, where God has commanded him. And the Bible says the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. But for him to experience a breakthrough, he had to go to a specific place that God, you know, and then has put aside for him. He said, go there. And I love it the way it is written. Go there. Because your blessing, it is there. God says, I have already commanded the ravens to go and feed you where, Bazalwane? There. If you are sitting here, the ravens, they are already on their way. Where, Bazalwane? There. So if you want your blessing, all that you need to do is to position yourself where? There. Where God has chosen, you know, you to be. Most of the time, we are sitting here, we are saying, I don't have a breakthrough here. Things are not happening here. Yet things are happening there. You are not supposed to be here. You are supposed to be there there you can so that you can experience the blessings of God so the question is where are you we want to experience the grace of God but we are not in a position where God wants us to be and I love it but the God says the, 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 the God says I have already commanded the ravens they are actually on their way so it is very important for you to be there on time because they are commanded to be there on time at this place, at a specific place. Not to a place that looked like it, but to a specific place. And because he was there, the Bible says the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. Hey, man, this is Isingwa. Nenyam. In the morning. And not just in the morning. 
The Bible says also in the evening, bread and meat. Praise the name of Jesus. How they transported the meat, I don't know. It's a topic for another day. I know that you and I, we know that ravens, they love meat. But how they transported meat to this person, it's a sermon for another day. But if you are in the will of God, I have said this before, if you are in the will of God, even those things that loves meat, they will never eat meat on that day because they are under the instruction and the commandment of God to come and deliver. Praise the name. If it's your season, even those who hate you, they will come and say, God said I must come and bless you. Even those who do not like you, if they are under God's instruction, they will come and say, this is what the Lord has said I must come and do. Ha! Ah, Barcelona. So these are the people. The list goes on and on. You know, I'm reminded of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. When Jehoshaphat was under attack, all that he needed to do was to position himself for victory. That's all. The scripture says in the book of 2 Chronicles 20, it says from verse 15, the prophet said to him, listen all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, I love the way it emphasizes, listen, it says the people of Judah and Jerusalem and it also goes specifically to the king. It says, listen King Jehoshaphat because we can hear God, God can address us as a crowd. But it is very important for you to hear God as an individual. So God says to the people of Judah, to the people of Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not even need to fight. All that you need to do is to take your position, then stand still. It is very important for you to position yourself for a breakthrough, for a blessing. You know, if you have positioned yourself, there are other battles, you don't have to fight them. Because all that you need to do is to be in your position. You know, most of the time we find ourselves fighting battles that do not belong to us because we are in a wrong position. It's like dating someone's husband. You see now, you are putting yourself in a... You're going to fight battles that don't belong to you. God, all that you needed to do is to position yourself. You're getting daughter, you're banned. So then people that don't fight you, sometimes people that are talking against us, they are saying terrible things because you are in a wrong place. Leave someone's wife. And you're not going to face many problems. Oh, that was a awkward. Uh, um, I don't know what type of a, a example. To all the examples, the Lord just dropped this one. Maybe the Lord knows that we are here. Mikona? Mikona, Bazalwan. So the list goes on and on. There are many people. You know, I don't want to talk about Zacchaeus. I don't want to talk about Esther. All those people, they position themselves to experience a breakthrough. But please write this statement down. Positioning is a key to success or breakthrough. Don't just hope for your life to change. Listen to me. Don't just hope for your life to change. Put yourself in a position to receive a breakthrough. Are you with me, child of God? It's like someone who wants to get a better salary in your company. Position yourself. Position yourself. Maybe you may need to take an extra course. Are you with me? Go to an extra course so that you can be positioned. Go study so that you can get a better position. Sometimes we are stagnant because we don't increase our value in life. 
Are you with me, child of God? That if we increase our value, we position ourselves, you know, we change our lives, we change our position, and then that will bring success and a breakthrough. But here is the beautiful scripture for today that I would want to take some few points from it and so that we have some few takeaways as we go home this morning. Look at this scripture in the book of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, it's a common scripture that we all know, a common scripture that we all know. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 7. Okay, now the Bible says, so it was as the multitude pressed about him, you know, to hear the word of Jesus. So they were pressing, you know, Jesus here. And then the, the, the Bible says that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And then verse 2 says, and saw two boats, this is Jesus, he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. I wanted to see this picture because this was a, a picture of discouragement, you know. And they were washing their nets because they could not catch a fish. They could not catch a thing on that day. And so they were discouraged and they were washing their nets. They've worked the whole night and now it was early in the morning and there was nothing that was happening. And then the Bible says, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. Now, I want you to, 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 to underline that. Here is Simon, as much as he did not catch a fish on that day, but here he is, he's offering Jesus and then his boat. Okay? He's offering him his boat. And the Bible says he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. Praise the name of Jesus. And in verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, it's amazing, the very same one who offered him a boat. He's addressing him, not everybody, but the one who has offered him a boat. So Jesus is addressing him. Why specifically him? Not the other people. We'll come back to that. So he says that when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Okay? But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And verse 6 says, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking, praise the name of Jesus. That is a breakthrough right there. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Because when there's a breakthrough in life, that breakthrough can break you or it can actually give you a breakthrough. And most of the people in the, in the season of their breakthrough, they get broken. Because they don't know how to handle a breakthrough. So a breakthrough most of the time does not become a blessing. You know, too many people can be a blessing. Too many people can become a curse if they don't know how to handle that. I have seen people who have been praying for the blessings of God. And the day they received the blessings of God, the very same blessing, you know, actually broke them. It is very important to position yourself you know, for, for a blessing or for a success here. Now, let me take you some few things from this, uh, just give you some few points from this scripture right here, and then we'll pray together. How to position yourself for success. How to position yourself for success. Here is the most important thing that we don't love hearing. We don't love, especially a black community. Sow a seed for your success. Sow a seed for your breakthrough. Peter was expecting a breakthrough. He just failed the whole night. But here he is in the morning. He's taking his boat. He's offering it unto Jesus. In the midst of tiredness. In the midst of failure. In the midst, you know, of disappointments. He still sees a need of offering a boat, sowing a seed for his breakthrough. Allow me to teach you on this one, Mazalwan. You know, many people, they come to me and say, Mfundis Matebula, you know, I see that the favor of God is upon you. I see that you are being blessed of God and all that. You know, instead of asking a proper question, because the question that they, they, they ask, it is always wrong. You know, they ask, what is the secret? 
It's like there is something that uh, I have, you know, and then that I'm using for my success. Let me tell you then the secret because you want to know. The secret of everything that you see here, the secret of everything that you see in my life, it is because many years ago we decided with my wife that we are going to become givers. We are going to sow seeds of greatness. I don't want to blow my own trumpet here. I don't know how many people we have blessed in this church with cars. People that we literally bought cars, not even from the church account, from our accounts. We bought them cars. We identified those who were in lack. And we said, we are coming to you, we're going to sow a seed. And we have been doing that. Giving has become a part of our lifestyle. Because we know, Bazalwani, that, you know, the, the, the world of the generous grows larger and larger. That is what the Bible says. The world of the generous grows larger and larger and the world of the stingy grows smaller and smaller. You see when you talk about offering, look how quiet it is. This is why the devil got hold of you, Bazalwan. The moment you speak about giving, People, they get depressed. I want to tell you, it is of the devil. That is how the devil wants you to deal with your life. He, he wants you to be stingy. He wants you to, 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 to keep it to yourself. And the moment you do that, you are depriving yourself. Learn to be a giver. And when I'm speaking about giving, I'm not just talking about, you know, money only. You know, be kind with your smile. Be kind with your attitude. Be kind with your behavior. Be kind, you know, to others. Be friendly. Many people are complaining, I don't have friends. I don't have friends. The question, are you friendly? Are you friendly? For the mere fact that you don't have friends, it simply means when you are always serious. You are a judge. When they do wrong, chop, 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 chop. And people run away from you. African people, I think this is where I blame the Americans. You see, this is where they've robbed us. They never, the missionaries never taught us that we need to become givers. And for years, we have been begging. For years, we have been begging. Is Allah Paul? Is Allah Paul? Is Allah Paul? Let me just demonstrate this. Let me just, Paul, come here. Come. I've done this before. Maybe let me just get a proper money. Do you have my wallet there? Do you have money there? And I'm not putting my wallet. Let's say I'm holding a, a hundred rand here, my brother. And I want to give. Can you see what is happening? The hand that receives is where? And the one that gives? That's it. Remember that. Thank you. Continue to be a receiver, you will always remain under. But if you learn to be a giver, you will always be on top. Those who are in my circle, they know. Even my white friends, they know. I'm the first one who offers to pay a bill. I'm the first one. Who As a matter of fact, I don't even ask them when I'm going out for lunch with them. I go out as if I'm going to the bathroom and then I go out there and pay my bill. The bill for everybody. Because I don't want to be under. The last time I was with Pastor Boshoff, he got angry because he understand these principles. <laughs> he understand it. He said, I invited you for my, this is my, this is, this is, this is, is my bill. How can you pay it? I said, I've paid it already, sir. <laughs> he said, Chris, I understand. And he started offering the waiters what he wanted because he knows the principle. He knows the principle. But when you always Position yourself. Position yourself. People, they love to surround themselves with givers, not the takers. 
When you keep on taking, they will run away from you. Position yourself by becoming a giver. Sow seeds of greatness. And those seeds will open doors. The Bible says your gift will open door for you. Your gift will place you in greatness. You'll find yourself in the presence of greatness because you are a giver. Are you with me, child of God? Number two, number two, number two. Believe God's word in spite of your past failures. Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. I'm saying to you, believe God's word in spite of your, your past failure. For the mere fact that you have failed yesterday, it does not mean you're going to fail today. Are you with me? For the mere fact that you have failed last year, it does not mean you're going to fail next year. These guys, they are saying, Master, we have toiled all night long. Why do you want us to do this? Jesus says, no, no, no. Do it. And I love the way he's answering. He says, Master. And he goes back, he says, at your weight. You know, all that he's saying says, you know, if it was me, with my understanding and my knowledge and my experience, there's no need for me to do this. But because you are saying so, I, I, I will do it. I don't want to do it, but I'm doing it because you are the master. You are the master. You know, child of God, sometimes you need to come to that level and say, you know, my flesh and my mind, you know, they are saying something else. But I'm refusing to listen to my flesh and my emotion. But this time I will listen to my master. It does not make sense. But because you, master, are saying that, I will do it again. I will do it again. You know, sometimes I'm even afraid of sharing my testimonies with you. Because they put me in a problem. I share my testimony and then you have 10 people queuing on the Lapagu foyer and say, Praise the name of Jesus. Recently, we were in, 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 in East London. Good faith when they were opening a dome. And things were happening there. And I felt the Lord saying to me, sow a seed into this ministry. And I decided there and there. I did not have that much money and spoke to my wife. I said, the Lord wants me to sow this seed. I saw a seed of 200 rand. Those of you who are watching, I saw a seed. And this man looked at me. Oh, Dr. Andrew said, Chris, I've never seen something like this. I usually give. So he was not brave enough to tell me to say, I've never seen a black man giving to me. <laughs> so I said, the Lord says, I must give you this. And it never made sense. It never made sense to a lot of people why I'm doing this. But it was a seed that God wanted me to do, to give. I don't know why I'm coming back to the seed again. Did you realize? I don't know why I'm coming back to that. But let me tell you, in two weeks' time, in two weeks' time, I'm not going to tell you, but if you believe in a hundredfold, if you believe in a hundredfold, that is exactly what I have received in two weeks' time. Hundredfold. So, can I have the share for your hundred? It's my hundredfold. Praise the name of Jesus. Learn to trust God for your breakthrough. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying when you did not receive a breakthrough and then you are not a giver. You wait. You continue to launch into the deep. You don't get tired. Yes, you have been toiling for the whole night and things are not happening. Don't give up, child of God. You know what you do? You keep on toiling. You keep on going deeper. You launch into the deep. That's what Jesus said. It does not happen now. You don't see the results. Don't give up. You launch into the deep. You launch into the deep. In due season, it shall happen. And God is a faithful God. He is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he promises, it shall come to pass. If you believe God, Come and shout amen this morning. So number, number three, launch into the deep. That's what I needed to say. 
Somebody put it in this beautiful way. Put it this person, success begins at extra mile. Or should I put it like this? There are no traffic jams when you go the extra mile. <laughs> when you go the extra mile, there's no traffic jam. Sometimes we need to go an extra mile so that we don't experience a traffic. So Jesus says to them, yes, you have been toiling here and there were no results. But I want you now to do what? To, to launch into the deep. Sometimes some of you, all that you need to do is to launch into the deep. Just go an extra mile in your marriage. Okay? I know you have been forgiving for some time. Maybe you need to forgive another moment she's going to minister me drink. hallelujah come on my darling all the best praise the name so so you go deeper an extra mile and you'll see what the lord will do so it breaks through to some of us we just have to go an extra mile praise the name of jesus and finally partner with others for your breakthrough and the bible says and 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 when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So the Bible says they called the other people, other partners, in their boat to come and help them. Praise the name of Jesus. When God gives you a breakthrough, it is not your breakthrough alone. Amen. It's a breakthrough that must benefit other people. I hear people saying, God bless me. God favor me. Why should God favor you? Why should God bless you? For what? Change your attitude. Change your attitude and see what God will do. Abraham, you know, I'm going I'm to bless you. I'm going to make your name great so that you become a blessing. All families on earth will be blessed through you. Now, these guys, when they caught great fish, the Bible says while they were trying, you know, to catch the fish with their own net, to, to pull up the net, they could not until they called other partners. Until they called other partners to say, come and help us. And they were able to benefit from that. Some of us, we are missing the blessings of God because we are self-centered. We are thinking about ourselves. I said to pastors the other day here, I think we had run about 600 pastors. Me to Google. After the service, all of you will have groceries. All of you. Because COVID has been so hard. All of you, you get uh, groceries from People Matter Foundation. All that I'm asking so that we can continue to buy more food in the near future. Would you please just make an offering of a 50 rand into People Matter Foundation? 50 rand. 50 rand. And I realize that we are damaged here. I do understand that the breakthrough that God has given unto us is so that we can share with other people. Amen. And we have seen God, Barcelona. I'm just encouraging. I'm not just posting. I'm just encouraging you. I'm just encouraging you. One man this year, one man, he gave us 1.5 million rand for People Matter Foundation. He said, I saw you are building houses. Here is 1.5. Would you please build more houses and to bless people? And these are the people that I don't even know. Some, some we are not even related. They are not a family members. Your problem is that the moment you are blessed, that is why when you go to one company, if the manager is a Shangani boy, all the people here, because you are self-centered. And then if he's a petty boy manager, manager, without a warra, 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 because your mind is so limited, you're only thinking about warra, fella, kalabo warra, 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 like I. 
the world of the stingy grows smaller and smaller. And the world of the generous grows larger and larger. Position yourself for your blessing. Would you please stand on your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Are you good this morning? Was that a good word? Was that a good word? Position yourself for a blessing. The Bible talks about the tree that was planted by the water, by the river. The Bible says winter, summer, this tree has been green all the time. Position yourself, children of God. Hallelujah. Position yourself. Position yourself with your life. Give your life to Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus, you are positioning yourself. Things started happening in my life the day I gave my life to the Lord. And that is how I position myself. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are God and there is no one like you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. To those who are watching virtually, oh God. Lord, we also pray for them this morning. Father, I just sense in my, my spirit this morning, many of us have lost our position. And you are calling us to position ourselves. To those of you at home, you are saying, Pastor Matebula, I want to position myself. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I would pray with you this morning. Even right here at home, you are saying, Pastor Matebul, I just want to position myself. I want Jesus to come into my life so that he can position me for my breakthrough. He can position me for a blessed life. I would love to pray with you. If you want me to pray with you, just raise your hand. Even you at home, just raise your hand wherever you are. And I'm making a prayer in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Church, let us pray even with those who have raised their hand this morning. Just pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Lord Jesus, be a Lord and the Savior of my life. Devil, from today, you will never, ever rule my life. My life belongs to Jesus. Jesus alone. Thank you, Father, for positioning me in you, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come and give God a big hand of praise. Come and give God a big hand of praise. To those of you who are watching virtually and then there are some numbers right now that are reflecting on the screen and then give us a call. There will be somebody and then who will be praying with you this morning. If you want to take this walk of, with Jesus to another level, somebody will be praying with you. And to those of you who are in this building and you need somebody, you know, to speak to you, you need somebody and then to continue being good to you and then just to walk with you and to disciple you, we have some elders here in the name of Jesus. Babus Kosana and Auspin will be here in the name of Jesus. If you said, Jesus, come into my heart, you've never prayed that prayer, you know, in your life, you've prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to give you a gift so that you will know more about your walk in Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you need somebody to pray with you, you can remain behind and somebody will be praying with you. As a matter of fact, let me just ask some elders right now to come and stand here because we are here for you in Jesus' name. Do you receive it this morning? Do you receive it this morning? Come and give God a big kind of praise. God bless you. Thank you for coming. If you need a prayer and you have prayed that prayer, you know, of accepting Jesus, just come. We're going to pray with you. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday. Men, remember, go register for your conference in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give us a song. As we
just 